All right, welcome back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Security crime is uh, our focus right now on this particular discourse. And uh, we have uh, uh, Dennis Amaku. He's a former assistant director at the Department of um, State Services. And uh, he's going to join us as we discuss, uh, you know, custom season container laden, yes, with guns. Uh, that, that happened on Friday at the Tinkan Island port uh, in the Apapa area of um, the state. Uh, you know, this is actually coming day after the IGP, you know, charged the police managers to brace up uh, to the anticipated internal security in the following uh, 2022 and all of that. Uh, good morning to you, uh, Dennis Amakwe. Good morning, Justin. How are you today? I'm doing okay. Uh, bright and early. We're doing good. All right, let's talk about this particular development because it is very worrisome, you know, that, uh, you know, this particular... I'll call them illegal arms or weapons, as it were, you know, being imported into the country and they're actually concealed in containers. It is actually very worrying because uh, the Inspector General of Police had actually hinted of uh, some internal security challenges uh, towards this particular time. What do we have on our shoulders right now? Uh, well, like uh, they said, it is um, illegal arms being concealed and then brought into the country. Uh, this is not the first time it's been coming in through that same thing camp port. Uh, but um, unlike what uh, the, the headlines are saying, uh, it's not a container load oh, wow. of, uh, of guns, yes. Uh, the, the one in 1917 was 2017, yeah, 2017 was the one that was uh, a full container load of. Um, uh, pump action, but uh, these these particular ones were concealed in cars, uh, so they are not a container load. But all the same, uh, they are a different form of uh, AR-15s that are coming in, uh, most likely from that's American gun uh, coming in uh, to Nigeria. But the, what is worrisome now is that these guns are infiltrated into Nigeria uh, in their regularly, regularly. Okay, so um, an another concern now is, like you have rightly mentioned, this is not the very first time we're having, you know, these guns coming to the country. And it might, maybe it might not just be the last time it would come in through that particular, you know, port. So the question now is, uh, because looking at the reports, I mean, the Nigerian, they are saying that uh, the reports, they are yet to, I mean, there's a press conference that's going to happen uh, sometime, you know, this morning or so before the end of the day. And we're hoping to get all of the information because everything is still very sketchy, according to, you know, the report. But um, they, they stumbled on the container. My question now is how come we just have to wait for tips? Because it feels like it's another tip off or it's another stumbling. We just stumble. Uh, are we not supposed to have equipment and gadget or devices, technology, that we can dictate if we have all of this container coming, you know, rather than depend on manual pattern of uh, finding out or waiting for somebody to tip us off or, you know, just stumbling on, uh, you know, this container and then you just realize that there's a gun there or you have ammunition there. Are we not supposed to, you know, have some form of technology and equipment to help us dictate uh, the things that are coming into our country, maybe contraband? Yeah, of course, uh, you're right. There should be having a, a very, you know, new technology uh, profiling that they could use by running the container through them. And then, of course, it will tell them what is inside the containers. Uh, but I don't think they have that uh, type of profiling at the time. So what they do is either by people trying to give information or uh, by just taking random samples. Because when you go to the port, the containers there are too many. You have thousands and thousands of containers being offloaded. Now, how do you go through them one by one? And that is a problem. Because I know that the port's authority have been trying to make sure that containers don't stay in the port for too long. Uh, you know, so they want everybody to clear their containers and go away. So in this hurry, you usually allow things to go out, and then, of course, they are being caught. Sometimes by, well, if there are snitches, even those with uh, arms and ammunition are being caught on the way after they've cleared the ports. So for now, that's what they are doing. 
But I agree with you, they should use a better uh, profiling system where they could uh, uh, see what is going through the container and it should be automated. That way, things will be faster. All right, uh, Dennis, uh, the concern right now for me is that uh, lately we've been having the proliferation of, um, you know, uh, small arms and ammunition in the country. You know, with this particular seizure, you know, getting into uh, or being uh, made by the Nigerian Customs, so what would have happened if they were not intercepted? Uh, because we are still battling with um, the war against insurgency, banditry, and these um, bandits and insurgents, you know, they have all sorts of sophisticated weapons. Do these weapons come through the port, or what do we, I need to understand what we have in our hands, because if these weapons were not intercepted, what would have happened, really? Uh, if they were not intercepted, they would go into society, into the Nigerian society, and then, um, I will tell you right now, there are many, that have come into the into into the country, either in private hands because some people. Um, I'm not talking of the ship load or container loads. I'm talking of this single or triple uh, uh, arms that are coming concealed in cars. Usually, they belong to Nigerians who are either living in the UK or United States, and then of course some of them are very worried about the security situation in the country, so they feel that. Well, I'm going to get an AR-15 uh, AR and keep it in my house. But that's an assault rifle. You are not supposed to carry that. You know, if you want a gun to protect yourself, uh, you, you, you can use a pistol or you can use a, a, a double barrel or pump action. But when you have an AR rifle, which is being used by the American military or SWAT teams, then you are thinking of a different kind of assault. You know, so, but these things are in the country and many people are trying to buy and keep them because they feel that if the society is very insecure, if anybody tries to break into my house, then I might want to deal with the person. But this is not supposed to be because it's illegal. You have to legalize any arm that you bring into the country. So invariably, it's all actually a fallout of um, the security situations we uh, we have uh, you know, faced with right now as a country, right. not as in Nigerians trying to protect themselves and not necessarily uh, maybe the bandits and their sponsors trying to bring um, weapons into the country? No, uh, I think uh, for the kind of weapons I've seen, um, I think they are mainly for protection. Uh, bandits are usually the, the uh, weapon of choice is AK-47. AK-47, and then AK-47 are also very, very um, expensive, which is, um, right now, if you go to the black market, you get AK-47 for at least half a million. That tells you that somebody is sponsoring these bandits and arming them. And that is where we have the problem. You know, when you have uh, AR-15s coming in, um, I think basically they are also for protection of self. But at the same time, because they are assault rifles, uh, they are illegal. You cannot keep such in your house. Okay. Um, you know, see, I'd like to ask you, do you think that we have been very sincere, you know, with uh, the fact that we have been making efforts to curb uh, control of, you know, small arms and proliferation of these arms in Nigeria? Have we been sincere enough? Uh, you know, to fight all of this because we know where these guns are coming through. I mean, maybe through the, you know, the land borders or what have you. Uh, but I'd like to share your thoughts on this one. Is there any sincerity in the fight or in trying to curb, you know, illegal arms importation into Nigeria? Yes, I think there is a lot of sincerity. The one that was uh, intercepted in 2017, um, which was handed over to the uh, DSS, and the DSS went ahead, processed them, uh, arrested some people that are you know, involved in it, and handed it over to the courts. Because you know, when you cannot deal with it all by yourself, when it comes to this kind of thing. So when it goes to the court, our court system is so slow. 2017, 
till date. We, we don't know what is happening again about those arms, uh, about, uh, about what happened to those people who imported those arms. So it is very, it's, it's a very serious issue. And when you look at all those lackadaisical or slow movements of a uh, justice system, um, many people will think that the country is not sincere. But I don't know, there must be a reason why uh, it takes so long to prosecute. And then, of course, give them the same publicity that was given when the arms were arrested. Give them the same publicity that these guys have been found guilty and uh, they are going to pay some kind of uh, punishment for that. So, yes, to answer your sincerity question, um, I think the government is sincere, but it's very slow in achieving uh, a deterrent uh, factor in this particular issue. All right, Dennis, uh, if I follow your postulation, uh, I'm thinking that uh, we have a lot of um, challenges and um, issues or problems I'm trying to avoid, you know, you know, right on our plates, because uh, if um, Nigerians are actually trying to find um, ways of um, protecting themselves and, and they're actually resorting to importing guns, and if that way is actually blocked, they might resort, you know, to other means, maybe uh, getting locally made guns here in Nigeria. So what do we do in terms of the issue of um, gun control and ensuring that um, if uh, you actually are in need of a gun or if you should be able to use a gun, you can get the guns um, legally. But then again, even if we start giving arms to Nigerians, what are we expecting to see in the next couple of years? Yes, uh, that is uh, between the dark blue sea, you know, and the rock. You know, we, we cannot give guns to Nigerians just like that. I, I believe strongly, I'm not an advocate of uh, gun handling uh, in the sense that individuals, the society should be structured in such a way that the police should take care of everybody. And we are seeing all these things because the police had failed in trying to get, you know, the society uh, secure. And you don't blame them too much because they are thinly spread. You have 400 or so thousand policemen uh, policing 200, 200 million people. It's not just possible. You know, it's not just possible. So when you try to uh, say, okay, uh, let's give arms to people, for instance, let them go ahead and uh, protect themselves. Uh, number one, some of them don't know how to handle arms. That means you have to open up uh, gun shooting ranges all over the country where people can go buy guns and then of course license it and go and try uh, on how to use it. Otherwise people will use and uh, kill themselves. And then think of it, Nigerians with our very high temper, even if in the traffic, traffic uh, accidents, you know, you'll find out that people will want to shout at each other or even shoot each other if they have guns. And uh, or some people leave, they come back home and they are, there is no food ready for them. They want to shoot their wives or something like that, you know? Uh, so guns, even in America, you find out that they are trying to curb it because the National uh, Rifle Association in America is trying to push it that everybody has the right to own a gun. But at the same time, you cannot use your right to just go into a shopping mall and start shooting other people or go to a school compound, university compound, and then start shooting people. So there are pros and cons, but I think uh, the, 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 it, it is a disadvantage when it comes to allowing people to just own guns randomly like that. All right. So... Um Recently, uh, the president transmitted a bill to the National Assembly and uh, the bill seeks to control arms and proliferation and regulate the importation of arms into Nigeria. Also, there was an establishment of, you know, a center for, for small arms and light weapons. I, I'd like to ask you, as a security consultant and expert, do you think that this will go, um, you know, a long way in reduction of arms importation, understanding that we have an issue of 
implementation of the law or following through, prosecuting, and even with the fact that the justice system, like you have mentioned, is very slow. Do you see this contributing anyway to you know, reduction of uh, gun control or access into our country? Yes, um, I actually followed that uh, uh, committee on small arms and light weapons uh, uh, during the, the about proliferation. And then you find out that, um, yes, what they are trying to do with that committee is to make sure that they, they know why these arms are coming into Nigeria, how they are coming into Nigeria, and how to stop them. You know, not how to uh, make sure that society is safer. They believe that if they stop it, and Custom is doing a very good job there anyway, because they keep on arresting or intercepting uh, double barrel uh, cartridges, uh, arms and ammunition coming through our porous borders. Now, if we really want to do something about this, we have to go back to the root causes. How did the arms come into this country? When we know those systems, we block them. If they are coming through the border, block those uh, porous borders. If they are coming through shipments, now you have, like you, we started earlier, use a better profiling technology whereby containers will just run through and then of course you will know. You know, even if it is broken down, it should be able to identify certain parts of the gun. You know, so these are the kinds of things that we could do. Um, we are not usually very serious about this, but the technology is there. You know, if you look at other countries, they are using them. So why can't we? All right. Um, thank you so much, um, Dennis Amakri, for your time and your thought. Indeed, uh, we need to relook look at the issue of gun control and um, the proliferation of um, small arms and um, light weapons in Nigeria because, as a teaser, we are not ready to, uh, for the massacre that it could cause if Nigerians are uh, giving um, you know, you know, arms um, readily. Thank you once again, um, Dennis Amakri, for your time. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we do appreciate it, okay? All right, uh, Dennis Amakri is actually the uh, former assistant director of um, the DSS and he is um, a security uh, uh, consultant. And Mercer, I don't really think um, I would want to have a gun because if you don't prepare my food, psh, <laughs> and just on a lighter note, I want to say a very big thank you to all of you who have actually sat back to watch. Uh, we'll return again tomorrow. My name is Justin Akadone. And I am Mercer Bopo. Do have yourself a great morning.